am in the midst of testing out several different Japanese whiteout and correctional products. Today, I am setting up one such test. We're going to be using PH Martin's Black Star Waterproof India Ink to create a test scenario for the six, possibly seven or eight different products that we're going to be testing. So I had kind of hoped I could, yeah, I could just squeak it in using a synthetic brush here. And I just want to create a nice opaque black swatch. And we're working on Blick Studio watercolor paper because I'm gonna throw a lot of different things at these correctional fluids. I mean, I'm really throwing down a hefty amount of ink here. We also have Jaime Drawing Soul K, which is alcohol marker proof, which is something else we're going to test out with these whiteouts. All right, so we're applying nice, opaque, thick stripe of the Jaime Soul K. And now we have just enough room for an acrylic ink. I thought testing out different inks with different properties would provide the most useful information. Now it's not black, it is a really pretty color of blue. I imagine most who would be using correctional fluid over it might be using it black, but blue will have to do right. And we're testing out PH Martins, and this is Dutch blue, so it's the sparkly stuff. And the reason I'm testing out an acrylic, they can get all the black out, but the reason I'm testing out an acrylic as well is acrylics kind of form a, a plastic, an acrylic coating on the paper. And I wanna see if that's going to affect the coverage of our whiteouts. I'm not even gonna be particular about it. Nice, thick application will be a good test. And then thin stripe. All right, so we've got three different inks that we're testing. We're testing out, or we're testing our correctional fluids on Black Star, on Kaime Drawing Soul K, and on an acrylic ink, PH Martins. So I need to allow these dry, to dry before my test can begin. Hey guys, so today we are going to do a bit of a whiteout correctional fluid showdown. We have several contenders here. You might recognize a few from my last video. We have Lion Misnon. We have Deleter White Number Two. We have Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. We have Pilot Juicy or Juice Up in size four. We have Uni Whiteia in one millimeter. We have Uni uh, Signo, and I believe that's an eight. We have a Kuratake white brush pen. We have the Deleter Neopico Line White in 0.5. We have a Posca White in, I wanna say one millimeter. We have a Posca White in 2.5 millimeter. And then we have a Molotow four mil millimeter round tip, and this is an acrylic white marker. So we have a variety of white correctional methods here today. The only big one that I use that we're missing, well, there's two, would be Copic Opaque White, which I just don't currently own any right now, but I really like it and I can recommend it, and White Wash. And I usually will use Blick or Utrecht or Windsor Newton White Wash to help with that. So we have swatched Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star We've swatched Kaime Drawing Soul K, and we have swatched FW Pearlescent. So we have an acrylic ink, we have a waterproof India ink, and then we have a not waterproof ink, but it is alcohol marker proof. And we're gonna be testing all sorts of things today. This was swatched onto Blick Studio watercolor paper. So this is cellulose-based watercolor paper. I thought it could take everything we're gonna throw at it. So our last video was really just kind of swatching, testing things out on black paper, but that's not really the main use case for these sort of products. So today we're gonna get a little bit more involved. We're gonna get a little bit more into it. 
So I'm gonna start with the finest and we're just gonna work our way larger. So we're going to begin with the smallest, the Pilot Juice Up. This was purchased in Japan, I believe from Sakaido, and it is a ballpoint pin type white gel pen. And it has a really, really fine line on it. So it's not meant to correct large areas. It's meant maybe to add highlights or to sort of add like stray hairs in an illustration, that sort of thing. And it seems to mark across the high carb just fine. Next, we have it on the Kaime. And it does start to lose a little bit of its oomph as we get to the area where we put down more of the Kaime, so where it was most thickly applied. Finally, we have the FW acrylic. It doesn't really want to mark across the FW acrylic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch all of our white correctional uh, materials and then we're going to move on to the next stage of the test where we apply water, where we apply alcohol marker, etc. Next, we're gonna take, at, take a look at the Signo Uniball, or the, rather the Uniball Signo. This has been an old favorite of mine from the first time I did these sort of tests years ago. And what I like about this correctional option, this white gel pen, is that it's willing to write on a variety of surfaces. The only thing I can't get it to mark over is watercolor. And I don't know, it could be the papers I'm using. It could be the pigments I'm using. It'll go over a marker just fine though. But when you put marker over it, it does leave a little, you can tell that there was a correction there. And sometimes that doesn't matter. Like you can use it to do kind of a lighter highlight sort of thing, but sometimes it does. Okay, so the Uniball Signo wrote quite well over the High Carb India Ink, over the Kaime Soul K, and it even marked on the PH, I mean, the FW acrylic. Next is the Uni Whitea. This is a much larger at one millimeter white gel pin, white correctional pin. Let me see if I can get it started. So you see it's much larger. It's kind of like a traditional white out pin. And it seems to just glide over without any problems. So the Pilot Juice Ups issue may be that it's so fine point, it just can't get enough liquid going when there's a little bit of a resist. And this is meant to cover larger areas. I could see it actually being kind of handier than the Uni Signo. If you're the sort of artist who does a lot of con commissions, this could actually cover a significant area. Next, we're taking a look, gonna move it on up. Taking a look at the Kuratake brush pen. And I'm gonna try to write it very delicately. I've been having flow issues with this pen, which isn't surprising because it uses a white pigment and those just tend to be a little bit bulky. Let me try dipping it just a little bit in the water see if we can't get it to go that way. So I've already started to notice some clogging issues. And the thing is, I did that test I showed you guys on the black paper yesterday, like literally yesterday. Ooh, okay. So as we remember um, from prior testing, Kaime is not waterproof. And this seems to have enough water in it that it sort of smears the Kaime a little bit. So you see it there. It doesn't go cleanly over Kaime Solke. So this might not be a good option for Kaime Solke. So we're doing kind of a coverage test here. This, I mean, I've been squeezing it and I've been getting a little bit more to come out. It's been kind of stubborn. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. 
literally picks up the Kaime Solke. So you cannot do any sort of real corrections with this over Kaime Solke. Next, we're introducing a couple of Oh no, We're, we've got the Deleter Neo Pico line. I thought we'd moved on to some new things. All right. So this is 0.4 millimeter. And it's got, instead of being a ballpoint pen, it has kind of an interesting fiber nib tip, which if you've used like Posca's, you might be familiar with. So this doesn't really have some of the marking problems that I had with some of the other gel pen or with some of the gel pens. And this is really more for fine corrections than it is for covering larger areas. However, it seems to mark on just about everything without any problems. Next, we're going to test the Posca. I've used these before. And this is the one that has sort of the bullet nib. And I find that the size of the Posca definitely makes a difference. So that's why we're testing out two different sizes today. And if I could dig up my brush Poscas, I'd be happy to test those for you guys as well. So with the Poscas, they do have a tendency to sort of flake off bits of white paint here and there. Maybe um, those aren't even dry paint, those could be wet paint. I've noticed that with my charms. Also, the water-based solution seems to be activating the Kaime Soul K. It goes down quite smoothly. I don't really have too many coverage issues. I should also note that none of these are really 100% opaque. If you're looking to make real corrections on an original that like no one would be able to note, oh, ah, that kind of makes okay, that no one would be able to notice, you should probably, I don't know. I haven't found a good solution yet, to be honest. All right, running out of room here. Let's try the Uni Pasca in the larger size. And this is, 2.5. And I'm so sorry I'm off camera. You guys need to say something when that happens. Ooh, it also seems to be reactivating. Ah, sorry. I know it's a terrible noise, but that's a terrible feeling. Ooh. Um, so it seems to react to or reactivate the high carb where it was the most thickly applied. Now I allowed this to dry for 24 hours. It definitely reactivates the uh, Kaime Sol K, which kind of transfers over to the acrylic. Finally, we have the, finally for this, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to apply all these tests all over again, let them dry for 24 hours, and then we can come back to that. Um, the Malatow, Malatov um, four millimeter round tip. So this is the acrylic one. And the Poscas, the Neo Pico, they all require pumping to get the pigment going or to get the ink going. Oh, okay. And this is the only acrylic marker, I believe. Oh, it won't even mark on this time air. I I'm serious. Uh, I know you're not dead. Okay. So this thing won't even mark on the Soul K. Like, look at that. It ghosts out completely. So even though this is an acrylic marker and you would think white acrylic could go over anything, it wants to die when it comes to marking on this ink. It does, however, mark on the FW ink quite well. All right, so from the bottom going up, we have the Molotow One for All Acrylic Premium Paint Pin. This is the four millimeter round tip. It doesn't seem to work very well as a white correctional pen. It only really wants to mark on the acrylic FW acrylic ink. So that is something to keep in mind. Next is the larger bullet-tipped Uni Pasca. 
It can go all the way up to 2.5 millimeters and it has a bullet nib. This is acrylic. This is actually a water-based paint and many of us theorize that it's a type of stabilized gouache or maybe a type of tempera. Posca does not respond to questions when, or, or at least when I've written in to ask what exactly this paint is. They just won't respond. And I've searched their site and can't find it. Uh, this is a smaller pasta with the smaller nib. So it's using the same paint as the larger Posca, just in a different format. But this one is a little less prone to coverage than this one, so I thought I would test out both. Next is the Deleter line, which I actually don't know what formula they're using. It says it's a water-based pigment that's high opacity and waterproof, so I'll be excited to test all of that out. It marked really well on everything. There were no significant problems with anything. And I'm gonna double check to see if it comes in a larger size. If it does come in a larger size, it could be ideal for making larger scale corrections as well. Next is the Kuratake white brush pen. I assume this is a pigment ink. This thing is really prone to jamming, which is, you know, that's kind of a common problem I've had with these sort of white brush pins. It is water-based and it reactivates the Kaime pretty significantly, about as significantly as the Posca does. So it is not really suitable for using with Kaime Soul K, but you can use it with Black Star and you can use it over acrylic ink. It seemed to mark quite well and it's difficult to get started. Next is the Uni Whiteia and it will mark on just about everything. The only problem is because it's a ballpoint pen, you can see that ballpoint pen line where the ball drags in the middle of the mark. And if we could just get rid of that mark, it would be pretty useful for covering larger areas. And then we have the Uniball Signo, which was kind of my go-to white pen for the longest time. It's much smaller, I would say it's like 0.8 and it will mark on all three inks, although not quite so much on the FW acrylic ink. And it's not really intended for large corrections, it's intended for small spot corrections. And then finally, the Pilot Juice Up, which is, which is in a 0.4, it has such a small, fine line. I'll fix that for you guys. Um, it doesn't necessarily want to mark on the acrylic, but I think that's a size issue rather than like the contents inside issue. It did mark on the high carb and it did mark on the drawing Soul K, although not so much in areas where it was thickly applied. As a general rule of thumb, for any of these pin-based white correctional fluid, pin or marker-based white correctional products, they don't like to mark on areas where your ink was very thickly applied. And I definitely tried to apply it kind of thickly because I've noticed that that's been a problem in the past and that was something I wanted to test for. So I'm going to allow these to dry fully and I'm also going to apply um, new swatches on the next side so we can test out our Minon, Minon our white number two and our bleed proof white. And I'm gonna see if I can't dig up some Copic opaque white and some white gouache. Hey, art nerds. So we return with more of our white correctional fluid testing. For this part of the test, we're doing sort of more solid white fluids, white correctional fluids. We have Dr. P.H. Martin's bleed proof white, which is a longtime favorite. We have Deleter white number two. We have Mise Nom. And we have some white gouache. I did not find any, any Copic opaque white in my home. So unfortunately, I am not going to be testing that. Uh, you are also going to need for these some water and a brush, ideally a synthetic brush. So we're gonna start with the bleed proof white. And I set this up the same way I set up the prior page. We have Black Star, we have Kaime Soul K, and we have FW Acrylic Ink. So, as you guys can see, I have used my PH Martins quite a bit. 
So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of water, just dripping it in here. These do have a tendency to dry out, but they can be reconstituted quite easily. Just gonna kind of mix it in the jar a little bit. And I can see that because it's got water in it, or we've mixed water in it, it starts to reconstitute the chyme. So if you were correcting a large area, you might want to be careful how you do that. It's not as bad though as some of the other white correctional fluids we have tested. I'm going to switch over now to a brush. And then I'm going to label it. All right, so that is the bleed proof white. Since we did some of our mixing on the cap, it can be prone to splattering like that. I'll just leave that as it is for now. Next, we're gonna take a look at the Deleter White number two. This one has a little foam gasket to help protect it from drying out. It does have a little bit of a smell, but it's not too bad. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, but not very much at all. Since we don't need to, this is nice and kind of fresh and even a little gelatinous. This too, even with the very little amount of water we added, reactivates the Kaime Soul K. Switch over now to a brush. And with these, if you're not careful, you can get kind of chunky applications. So that's just something you're gonna wanna have to watch out for. It could be a reason to want to mix in a little bit of water so you can get a more consistent application. All right, and that is liter white number two. Next, we have the Mouvenon, which has its own applicator brush inside. So it's a lot like a little bottle of whiteout. So we're gonna use the brush first. And this is definitely very thick. Reminds me a lot of American whiteout. Now the true test would be to see whether or not any of these yellow over time. And that will be a test I set up on another day. So it takes several dips if you're trying to kind of cover a sizable area. It does not, however, reactivate the Kaime Soul K. So if you're looking for a whiteout solution, a correctional fluid solution that is not going to affect your non-waterproof inks, this is probably that solution. All right, next I'm gonna do a very thin, or I'm gonna attempt to do a very thin line using their brush. You can see it does not really go very far. And this brush is not very nuanced either. If you're gonna want to do kind of a finer application with this, you're gonna want to use your own brush which I will pull out in a minute. All right, drying the water from this brush, attempting to dip it in to the Minon, Misenon. Maybe not my favorite way of applying white out. It doesn't dip all the way in. It kind of gets caught in the little catch Ah, oh, and when we do use a brush, it does activate. So scrubbing, scrubbing the mise en will cause it to reactivate something like chymase, okay. So if you want to use mise en over like a non-waterproof ink, I would recommend you apply it using this little brush here. Oh, trying to write it and it does not want to write. 
And then finally, we have Utrecht Designers Gouache. It's just white gouache. You can use almost any brand. There are a few I would avoid. I don't really care for Pelican uh, white gouache, but Utrecht white gouache works just fine. The downside to this is you do need to apply it somewhere and there's also gum arabic in it so this is a brand new bottle you guys will see there's like a little bit of yellow you don't really want to use that you want to kind of get rid of that oh this one's kind of settled out and the gum arabic is used in watercolors it's just a binder then you also want to add some water to your gouache until it's kind of a cream consistency. This is, yeah, it's definitely going to reactivate the chymase, okay? And this is a water-based correctional medium. Now what's nice about this is a little bit kind of goes a longer way than some of these other correctional fluids and it's fairly economical and it's not as prone to drying out. You kind of just squeeze out what you need. So as you guys saw, my peach Martin's Blue Proof White has kind of dried out. Oh, the gouache is gonna last a lot longer without drying out. I kind of use them both interchangeably though. I mean, you could use white ac acrylic gouache you could use white tempera or white poster paint. So it definitely reactivates the Kaime Soul K. I mean, if you live in a country where you can easily get some of these other white correctional. You try. Gosh. If you live in a country where you can easily get some of these other white correctional tools, there's no reason to not use what is the most convenient for you. But in the U.S., we're a little bit more limited into what in what we have access to. Okay, so I am going to allow these to dry, and then we're going to test out the whiteout solutions we swatched yesterday. Then. Tomorrow, it'll seem like no time at all for y'all, but I'm walking you guys through so you understand kind of my swatch process. Tomorrow, we're gonna come and do the same tests over here on these. This is dry enough to flip over. And I set these up yesterday. And today we're going to test them in several different ways. We're gonna test their waterproofness. We're gonna try ring inking over them. We're going to try erasing pencil from them. We're gonna to try to marker over them and we're gonna to try to watercolor over them. So we're testing several different parameters. And if it won't work on this, I'll switch over to a different, um, I'll create a new swatch sheet for some of those. So what I'm gonna test on this today is I think I'm gonna test the ability to ink, the ability to marker, and the ability to watercolor. So we have the Pilot Juice Up, which I have right here. We're gonna grab kind of a mid marker color. And then I have a cup of water as well. Now I've extended my lines even into the white paper area. That's gonna kind of allow us to work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, and I'm not gonna do this on the non-waterproof inks cause that's gonna cause a mess anyway. But I'm gonna try to reactivate. And it looks like even though we allowed the pilot juice up, to dry for 24 hours, it does reactivate. Just a little bit, and we'll see, maybe it dries, um, maybe it dries a little bit better than that. And then we'll take our marker. And it looks like you can color over it. It will still leave a mark. You can see it faintly. And since it's so small, it's a little bit hard to tell. 
And now I'm gonna use a Kuretake Fudego Kochi, cause that's my favorite of the pins. And I seem to be able to mark over it cleanly. You can't really tell that I'd marked over it. We'll try that over on some of these inked areas as well. Yeah, seems to be decently reworkable. Of course, it's so small. It'd be strange if you couldn't. Next, we're moving on to the Uniball Signo. Ooh, this one is also very reworkable with water. It means you can't really watercolor on top of it or apply watercolor on top of it if that is your desire. Let's try it with the Copic marker. It's definitely more noticeable with the Signo than it was with the Juice Up. And now we're going to apply some ink. Looks like it covers pretty cleanly. Can't really tell it was there. Next, we have the Uni Whitea. And any of the properties I'm showing you guys, it can be used to your to make a better piece. It can be used in your favor. It can be used to your detriment. It's really up to you how you want to use it. That's why I'm testing this the way I'm testing it. The Uni Whitea seems much more water resistant than the Signo or the Juice. It also stands out where we've applied the white and where we've colored over. And when you apply ink over it, at least when you apply Furigo Kochi ink, you can see where you'd initially made the correction. And since it's a little bit more raised, it's a little bit like Braille in that it's raised from the paper, there is um, kind of a base relief as well. Next is the Kuretake brush pen. This one, like the Whiteia, is somewhat water resistant. I am getting some pickup, but it's really not bad at all. So you could um, maybe water, maybe, I mean, it's not taking water like water, like maybe we'll have to try this with watercolor. It's basically what I'm saying. It's a little bit less noticeable when you apply marker over it than with some of the others we have tested. And it's fairly easy to ink on top of it. So the brush pin definitely kind of merits further testing. And this would be it. All right, next is the deleter line. This one here. This one also seems fairly water resistant. It does leave a little bit of a resist when you try to marker on top of it. Actually, I look at my marker, it's picked up a lot of white. I think it actually dissolved a lot of the Kuretake correction. So it's not that the correction absorbs the ink color, it's that we're actually lifting up some of the correction. And it seems fairly easy to mark over, but as you dry, as it dries, you can kind of faintly see where the correction was initially. Next is our Posca in size 0.1. Also fairly water resistant, which isn't surprising since Posca markets their markers as being waterproof once dry. I've never really tried to do Posca and alcohol marker collaboration mixed media. That might be something fun to do in the future though. And it doesn't seem to absorb the alcohol marker very much, very well. And you can definitely see, ooh, okay. You can definitely see the correction through the ink. All right, next is the Posca in 2.5. Fairly water resistant. It 
Fairly alcohol marker resistant. I have a feeling we're gonna be able to see the correction even more through this. Yeah. Ugh. It's like my Fudigo Kochi is reactivating it a little bit, which is a little disconcerting. And then we have the acrylic Molotov marker. This one is surprisingly not water resistant. I'm able to reactivate it. And since it's acrylic, that should not be the case. And your alcohol markers are going to pick that up because acrylic is, you can um, reactivate it using alcohol, like rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol or the sort of alcohols they use in alcohol markers. you can kind of cover it with another layer of ink. All right, so for all the markers that we have tested, all the markers and gel pins that we've tested just now, there's a few that I'd actually like to kind of revisit in the future, maybe in another stage of testing. I think I would like to revisit the, kind of want to revisit all of them except for the juice up. The juice up is so tiny, it's just hard to tell what it is and what it isn't capable of. Um, but I definitely want to try these on a black paper and I also want to try watercoloring over them to see how well they take watercolor, like whether or not they could be used as a watercolor ground. And on that note, I actually have a few different watercolor grounds that I could test for you guys as well. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know that in the comments. So it does seem like alcohol marker reactivates a few of these. It seems like it will pick up the Kuratake. It seems like it picks up the Molotov. Um, none of these, you're not going to get a good color match. Like let's say you correct your line art and then you marker on top of it. You're going to be able to see the correction with almost any of these. Some people could definitely use that to their advantage. I'm bringing that up because to me, that's like having all your flaws pointed out. So I'd rather know that that's a factor. You can re-ink on almost all of these. You might need to do a couple of layers to get good coverage, but you can definitely rework on almost all of these. They don't turn to sludge. Now, some of them, if you do like four layers of correction, it's gonna get increasingly difficult, like with the Uni Whitea, because it leaves such a texture on the paper. You really wanna be careful if you cover something and then re-ink, because that texture might kind of guide your pen or steal your pen away. The Kuratake brush pin had its own kind of issues. You guys saw me struggle to use it, struggle to get it to work. Um, if you are interested in waterproof, the Kuratake is somewhat waterproof. It is a pigment-based ink. The Uni Whitea is somewhat waterproof. The Deleter line is fairly waterproof. The Posca is fairly waterproof. Um, the Molotow was not waterproof, which was surprising because it's an acrylic paint. I don't know if mine is having issues or what. So I am going to allow the whiteout swatches, the correctional swatches I've applied on this other side to dry for 24 hours. And then I'm gonna perform the same tests on those. All right, art nerds. So these have had a chance to dry out overnight. From top to bottom, we have Bleed Proof White, we have Deleter Number no. 2, we have Mise Non, and we have Utrecht Gouache. So we're going to go ahead and put these to the test. We are testing water fastness. We are testing how well they take alcohol markers. Seems to pick it up just a little bit. Um, the bleed proof white seems to be a little bit water soluble and I'm starting to see some cracks in it as well. Um, when you apply the alcohol marker on top of the bleed proof white, the nib kind of starts to absorb. And then... Ooh. When you have this much applied, 
it really seems to make a big difference. So you could use bleed proof white to correct a whole area, but maybe not to rework a whole area. Next is deleter number two. This one is much more water resistant. I'm really kind of scrubbing at it and it is starting to pick up, but it's also reactivating the ink underneath. So that's a lot of scrubbing. It does not seem to reactivate with the alcohol marker. Now going back up to the bleed proof white, the difference between where we've put our correctional white and the white of the paper isn't that striking. So you could maybe use bleed proof white to do some corrections if you're going to do a marker piece. The deleter number two was fairly thickly applied and in areas where it's kind of caked on, that definitely causes a bit of a resist but it's actually easier to make corrections and less likely to reactivate than the bleed proof white. So next is the mise -non. This one is very water resistant. I did find it annoying and a little bit difficult to apply in other tests but it is at least very water resistant. All right, you can also see a pretty striking difference between the alcohol marker on the mise -non and the alcohol marker on the paper, especially compared to like deleter number two where the difference is much more subtle and even bleed proof white where the difference isn't particularly striking. Now we're gonna try marking over it And it definitely takes black ink pretty well. It's fairly thirsty though, so it may end up using up more ink or it may take a couple layers to get the effect you want. Finally, we have the Utrecht gouache, which is very water reactive, which should surprise no one, it's gouache. It is a water-based medium to begin with. You can mark on top of it. There is still a bit of a striking dif uh, difference. You can tell where the correction was made, although it's not quite as much as the mise -non. And you can do ink corrections on top of this. Although I would recommend if you're doing say, just from my experience working with white gouache, if you're going to be doing your corrections with um, a water-based ink using a brush, you really wanna be careful because it's gonna have a very similar effect to reactivating it with water. I prepared this test a little bit earlier on. I did this off camera. So what we have here are, for the most part, the bottled inks. These are all sort of larger scale, larger area correction comparisons. So we have the mise -non, we have the Deleter White 2, the PH Martin's Opaque White, the Utrecht White Wash, the Kuratake Brush Pin. We also have the larger Posca, the Molotov One For All, the deleter line white, and then the whiteia. And what I also did is I went ahead and I did some layering tests to kind of test opacity and how long it took to build up to a good white, a coverage white. And since we're using black paper, that's pretty easy to test. You guys can see that most of these with just, oh, and all of these squares were done with just one application. So you guys can probably see that um, with just one application, these are not truly opaque. They're not really covering. Now, I will also note that the Kuretake brush pen, it might look good, but I really struggled to get the ink to flow. It's got some serious clogging issues. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna do a couple of different tests. We are, actually I'll switch that out. No, I'll leave this. Um, we're going to do a correction test. So we're gonna use pencil on top of it, maybe a little bit of erasing and then try to ink over it. Since most of the time when you're doing corrections, you're correcting something that's wrong. And then we're gonna try doing a little bit of watercolor over it just to see how well it takes the watercolor. Now, these are not watercolor grounds. That is a different product that I will review in the future if there's interest. So we're really just seeing if it can take watercolor at all. So we're gonna start up here with the mise -non. So I've got just a pretty typical mechanical pencil. It's what I normally use. Seems to take the graphite decently well. 
All right, let's say I want to erase. This is a mono non-PVC eraser. We'll use one of the corners. Seems to erase fairly clearly from the mise en Now let us try inking over it. And this is a Kuratake Fudego Kochi. It is a water-based, non-waterproof inking pen. Okay, I'm gonna let that fully dry and then I'm gonna try to erase the graphite out from under it. But so far, so good, seem to take it pretty well. Next is the Deleter White number two. This one has a little bit of a tooth to it which makes drawing on it a little easier. I've used correctional fluids in the past where there was no tooth and it just got kind of slick, hard to draw on. Seems to erase cleanly. Seems to take the ink nicely as well. Next, we have the PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. This one's a little bit slicker Taking the graphite okay though. Let's try erasing. Erased okay. Like if you were erasing the whole area, you would come to regret that, I think. A little bit squeaky and starts to resist my Fude Gokochi. You saw the line skip even though I was putting pressure down. So that one might not be the best for corrections where you need to actually redraw something. Now we have the Utrecht white gouache. And this one for one layer has very little coverage at all. This is hard to draw on. There's a little bit of a slickness to it, a little bit of a surface to it. And you guys probably can't really see the graphite too well. Let's try erasing. Seem to erase okay. One of the things I'm also looking for when we erase is whether it causes the correctional fluid to crack or lift up. Ink. It takes the ink decently well, but towards the end it sort of skips out. I think with any of these water soluble ones, you may have a problem re-inking on them. Next is the Kuratake brush pen. Oh, this one definitely has a like a slicker surface texture. It's a little harder to draw on. I don't think this one is for corrections at all. I think this one is for um, like doing whites of the eyes or adding white strands of hair or maybe adding white details. Okay. Erasing. Seem to erase okay. And took the ink okay as well. So you could like, let's say you put down like a hair you could tighten it up a little bit. Next is the Posca. This one has a little bit of a texture as well. Now it's twofold. I think the Posca itself has um, add some slickness to the paper, the Posca ink, but the way we apply it also started to abrade the paper surface a bit because you're using a water base product on top of cellulose paper with a sort of scratchy nib that tends to tear up paper. It does, however, take ink decently well. Did not even try erasing. Let me do that. Seems to erase okay from what I could see. Now, this is not a soft lead. This is an H or an HB lead. So it's not going to be as prone to smearing. I'm going to try on the Molotov, but I will say this, even though this is acrylic, I had a lot of problems with this product and there's a lot of stopping and skipping. So we may not even really be able to see what I'm doing. Takes the graphite okay. Let's try erasing. Seems to erase decently well taking the ink okay. All right, then we have the Deleter Line White and the Whiteia. Let's try erasing. Uh, erased it, erased it, erased, but with some ghosting. Okay, let's try re-inking. 
takes the ink okay. I think, and this is kind of preemptive, I think probably for black and white comic artists, the best combination is going to be the Deleter White 2 with the Deleter Wine White. And then we have the Whiteia, which definitely has a texture on it and also a streaking, which was caused by the ball part of the ballpoint pen. So, ooh, yeah, that texture is noticeable. It sounds like a car going over corrugated cement. You can erase cleanly from it. Oh, but it gets to a point where it doesn't want to take the ink anymore either. Right, so next test is the watercolor test. And I have here some Winsor & Newton watercolors. I just want to see if it absorbs color because I didn't really think my prior test did a good job of showing that. Just a little bit over here. A little bit right there. And those are nice and resistant to kind of reworking as we add water. Oh, the white gouache though does not like being corrected. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys can't see. So when I applied the water to the, in fact, I'm gonna do it again so you guys can see what I'm doing. On that won't do it. But initially what it did, oh, you can see it now. It's starting to cause a little bit of a resist. And then it pools in one direction. That's not gonna work if you want to put color on top of it. Molotile. That one causes a bit of a resist too, which is not surprising because acrylic has a plasticizer in it and a plasticizer, plasticizers do not like accepting water. They are water repellent. And then finally, the Whiteia. What we're going to do is we're gonna let this dry for 24 hours and then I'm gonna try erasing the graphite out from underneath the ink to see if that disrupts the ink. All right, art nerds, so the inks have had 24 hours to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and try to erase the graphite from under them. Starting with the Mismo. The Mismo seems to take erasing decently well. I'm not seeing noticeable ghosting. There is still some graphite marks left, but I'm able to remove the majority of the graphite. Down here, there is some ghosting. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll zoom in super tight so you can. But otherwise, it's a pretty clean erase. Next, we have the Deleter White 2, and I'm using a really, really soft eraser. This is a um, Creative Mark White Stroke. The Deleter 2 took that a lot better. Um, very, very little graphite ghosting, very, very little, if to maybe no, pickup of the ink itself. So Deleter White number two, Pretty good for corrections. Next up, the PH Martin's Opaque White. Um, some ghosting, crackling, and lift up. Uh, the eyes definitely lifted up, and you can still see a lot of the graphite. Next, the white gouache. Um, it seemed to pick up a lot of the gouache and cause a lot of ghosting and there's still some graphite at the top. Then we have the Kuratake brush pin, which again, I don't think is necessarily for corrections. And yeah, the graphite really doesn't want to lift off. Next, the Posca. Ooh, look, it actually lifted the Posca off the paper. So this would not be useful for corrections. And then finally, the Molotile, which you can barely see at all. I would say it's just not suitable for corrections in general. All right, so we're also gonna take a look at the watercolors we applied. So the Misnon seems to take the watercolor pretty well. That was just regular watercolor. It wasn't watered down acrylic or anything like that. Um, and it seems to cover the area nicely. Same for the Deleter White number two. Same for the PH Martin's Opaque White. 
The Utrecht white gouache definitely does not seem to take um, watercolor as well, which is kind of interesting since it is a gouache. The Kuratake brush pin takes the watercolor really strangely. I just really cannot recommend that. The Posca seems to take the watercolor fairly well. And then where we can actually see coverage, the Molotol seems to take the watercolor well as well. Next is the Deleter Line White. That's one of the small pin types in case you guys have forgotten. And it's very hard to tell with the graphite, but it does look like you can watercolor on top of it. And then finally, the whiteia, which I just don't think is meant for these types of corrections. It's probably meant for clerical corrections. Uh, seemed to cause some smearing and some lifting, but it does take watercolor decently well. All right, art nerds, we have tested so many sort of white correctional or whiteout-esque fluids. Let's go ahead and count them up and then we'll discuss the results. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11. We have tested 11 different products. That's a pretty substantial comparison. We've tested them in a few different ways. So I think the Pilot Juice Up, at least in the size four, is really meant to add white highlights, white accents, rather than for correction. So I would not recommend this as a correctional tool. I think the Uniball Signo is, that's kind of my standard. That's what I've been using for years. I'm probably still going to keep using it. Its form factor is very compact, very easy to carry around. So I can't really see that changing. The Uni Whiteia seems to be more for clerical corrections. It puts down a lot of white ink. It also leaves, like you can feel it, which makes that difficult to correct on top of. The Kuratake brush pin is difficult to use. The pigment has a tendency to clog the foam sponge inside and doesn't quite get to the tip. You really have to squeeze it a lot and then it has leaking issues. So maybe I'm using it wrong. Maybe one of you guys can show me the error of my ways, explain to me how I'm goofing. You can do that in the comments down below. The deleter line is pretty promising. It puts down a fairly um, even layer of white correctional fluid, unlike the Whiteia, where you can see kind of where the ballpoint pin ball is. So this is also going to end up joining my pencil case. The Poscas are okay for correction, but if you try to erase, they lift up. So I really wouldn't recommend them for corrections that you're gonna want to ink over or draw over. Now we're on to our jar type correctional fluids. The PH Martin's Bleed Proof White has been a stable on my drafting table for a while, and it is not waterproof, but it takes Copic marker decently well, and you can re-ink it. It's got great coverage, some of the best coverage of the products we've tested. It does take watercolor well. There wasn't too much reactivation. In order to get a really nice full opacity, I only had to do two coverages, and honestly, one would suffice on most papers. And I was able to cleanly erase and re-ink without too much destruction to our whiteout layer. Deleter 2 is another recommended product if you can get a hold of it. It's not as opaque as the Bleed Proof White. It's a little bit harder to get a hold of. I think you can get Bleed Proof White at almost any art supply store. Whereas Deleter White number two, you can probably get it at like Mido or, um, those sort of like Japanese art supply stores, or you can get it in Japan, or you can get it through the deleter shop and their shipping is two days. So it's really pretty good. Um, it and the PH Martins performed very similarly with the deleter being slightly more water resistant. And I would say about equally good at taking Copic marker corrections. It is noticeable where I put the correctional fluid, but it's not as striking as some products I've used in the past. Then we have the Mise Non 
correctional fluid. This has a little stiff brush in it. Those of you who are a little bit older and have used correctional fluids in the past, this has a really recognizable form factor. It is a little bit shiny and it can be difficult to apply. I found it took about three layers to get full opacity. It does ghost a little bit. It is fairly water, in fact, it, on here, it looks entirely water resistant, but you can see the line where you applied, where I applied it to the paper and then I used Copic. So of um, the Bleed Proof White and the Deleter 2, I would say this is the least effective if you want to make unnoticeable Copic corrections. Then we have the white gouache, which is over by my watercolor stuff, so I'm not gonna grab it. And white gouache is just an opaque white watercolor. It's not necessarily designed to be used for corrections, but many comic artists do use it for corrections. You mix it with a little bit of water. So it's the only product we tested where you have to mix it with some water. So you do need a mixing surface. It doesn't come prepared right out of the jar. It is not as opaque as any of the other products we've tested above it. it was very prone to lifting up even with a gentle uh, eraser and it just doesn't really seem to take corrections well and it certainly doesn't take watercolor well. It's also noticeable when you've applied it and then you put Copic on top of it. And of course it is very water soluble being a watercolor product. Again with the Kuratake brush pen I would not, oh look there's some cracking and crazing over here. Let me zoom in where it was applied thickly. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's definitely some cracking here. None of the other products I've put down have that cracking. I guess they all include some form of plasticizer. This does crack. So it's not intended to be used as a correctional fluid in this capacity. I think it's more intended for accents. The Posca is a water-based but waterproof once dry sort of white marker. And these are more used for art than for correction, but I wanted to try it and it lifts up when you erase. So it's not really suitable for correcting areas that you're going to redraw. It does take watercolor decently well. And then I would say skip the Molotov one for all, not worth the time, not worth the effort. So my recommendations would be for those of you who are interested in traditional black and white comics, or maybe you need to add white accents or white highlights to your work, I would recommend the Deleter Neopico Line number, wait, yeah, Neopico Line White. So this one here, I would recommend the Deleter White number two, and I would recommend PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. But you guys, if I can find links to it, I will link everything in the description below so you can try it out for yourself if you're interested or you can just pick up my recs. So I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, for helping me test all of these whiteouts. If you enjoy these sort of comprehensive art supply comparisons, let me know in the comments below. I have a few other products I would like to test this way. And I'm always happy to review comic supplies. Um, I used to do that a lot over at natus.blogspot.com. So if you're looking for like the perfect food aid pin or the perfect technical pin, you should head on over there. And the only reason I've kind of pulled away from it is that these sort of posts, these sort of videos just don't seem to do as well as certain other types. But this is really where my passion lies. So if you love it, let me know. Give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you want more of this. If you're interested in checking out my comic work, you can check out my watercolor comic, 7 Inch Kara at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. If you're interested in just checking out my comic work in general, you can find a link to my Kid Lit Art portfolio, which is full of comics because comics is what I do, down in the description below. And if you enjoy learning more about art supplies, you can head on over to my art, re art, ugh, cannot talk, art process blog, mattosoup.blogspot.com. I do a lot of art supply and watercolor reviews there as well. So thank you guys. It was a pleasure and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.